close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to keep your mind right here in the present moment. Don't let it go wandering off someplace else. There's work to be done here. The mind needs to be put in good shape, as the Buddha said. If you want happiness, you have to train the mind. And this is how you do it. It's like training a little puppy. You have to put it on a collar and put it on a leash. At first the puppy is going to complain and it's going to run off in all directions, but the leash will, ca leash will catch it. So you've got to make sure that your hand on the leash is strong, otherwise the puppy is going to drag the leash all over the place, and then the leash won't mean anything. But at the same time, you have to show some affection. So this is where you focus on making the breath comfortable, so the puppy will actually like to be here. This way it grows into an animal that you can actually live with. Otherwise, if our minds are untrained, they can make messes all over the place, tear things up, make things dirty. In other words, you can get good things in your life. It's the result of your past good karma. But then you can abuse them and misuse them, and all that work you went to to make merit and to do good in the past will suddenly just be shredded to pieces. So this is why the important part of merit is meditating. In English, we tend not to use the word merit. It sounds a little bit like Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. But as the Buddha said, the acts of merit are another word for happiness, the well-being of the mind. You do good, and good will come from it. And so you want to stash up as much goodness as you can. For times when things are things go bad. And this is why the training of the mind is so important, because if the mind is well trained, then when you're meeting up with good past karma or bad past karma, you can take it with equanimity. You don't get worked up over it. You don't get weakened by it, because you've got the strength of your well-trained mind inside. So that's why we meditate. After all, generosity is a way of training the mind. Virtue is a way of training the mind. But if you really want to get it under your control, you've got to meditate. So make sure that you meditate every day, every day. Stay with the mind. Stay with your awareness in the present moment. Stay with the breath. As for other things, you can let them go during the meditation. You don't have to be responsible for the world all the time. We all need times when we can rest. Just like the body needs to rest, the mind needs to rest. And resting in sleep gives you some respite, but it doesn't strengthen the mind as much as resting in meditation. At the same time, when you're sleeping, there's no way you're going to gain any discernment into your own mind. It's when you're awake and alert and well concentrated, that's when you begin to see your own mind and understand it. And that's how you can get intelligent control over it. Otherwise we try to force it and we're control freaks about some things and we let things go in, the other, in other areas. But when you're really intelligent, you see, okay, this is how the mind is well controlled, controlled how it's well, well behaved. And actually it's something you want to have around the house, something that doesn't destroy all your goodness. And actually it makes whatever you've got around you even better. So think about training the mind every day, every day. That's how we become well-trained human beings, people that we can live with. I mean, you're going to learn to live with your own mind, okay? so that you're not constantly battling yourself. Okay, This is how you do it. You get the mind to stay in one place and you feed it well with the breath, feed it well with the sense of well-being and the concentration. And then it'll be happy to be trained. <laughs>